Okay, so I did cosecant x for you. Now I want you to graph y equals secant x for me. And then go ahead and state the period, the midline, and the vertical asymptotes. Now to help you out, I've put at the bottom here um, the same chart except with x and cosine x. And you can work through all the pieces and plot those on your graphs. And then come back when you're finished and let's see how you did. Okay, we're back. We're going to graph y equals secant x with the period, midline, and vertical asymptotes. I'm going to just start by making the right tick marks on my axis here. So I'm going to break each pi over 2 interval into thirds and then mark my halfway points as well so that I have those three special values to draw on each graph. Okay, so Remember that secant x is the same thing as 1 over cosine x. And so I'm going to do 1 over all the values of cosine x. So 1 over 1 is just 1. That's an easy one. 1 over the square root of 3 over 2 is 2 square root of 3 over 3, or 1.15. 1 over the square root of 2 over 2 is just the square root of 2 or 1.414. 1 over 1 half is 2. 1 over 0 is undefined. 1 over negative 1 half is negative 2. 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2 is negative square root of 2 or negative 1.414. 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2 is negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 or negative 1.15. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Let's start by graphing those, shall we? So uh, we'll start with 0 comma 1, then pi over 6 comma 1.15, and then pi over 4 comma 1.414, pi over 3 comma 2, pi over 2 with a vertical asymptote because it's undefined, 2 pi over 3 and a value of negative 2, 3 pi over 4 and a value of negative 1.414. 5 pi over 6 and a value of negative 1.15. Pi with a value of negative 1. So you can kind of start to see what we're up against right now. We have an upward swoop between 0 and pi over 2, and then a, a swoop that starts at negative infinity and swoops up on a concave down curve um, between pi over 2 and pi. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly write out the next line in the table. So at pi, we would have a value of negative 1. At 7 pi over 6, we would have approximately negative 1.15. At 5 pi over 4, we'd have approximately negative 1.414. At 4 pi over 3, we'd have negative 2. At 0, we'd have undefined. 5 pi over 3, we'd have a value of 2. 7 pi over 4, we'd have about 1.414. 11 pi over 6, we'd have about 1.15. And then at pi, we'd have 1. So putting those in place, what we're going to see is that same pattern repeating symmetrically so that we have a downward swoop. And then we have an upward swoop. Now if we jump over to Desmos and we look at a graph of cosine with points, we can go ahead and graph y equals, go to the functions and find secant x, And then if we zoom out a bit, you can see that same repeating pattern of concave up and concave down curves. They're just shifted by pi over 2 from our last set. When we want to talk about the period of cosecant x, it's still going to be pi. The midline is still going to be y equals 0. And then how would we write the vertical asymptotes? Well, look, let's look at where they are now. They're at pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. The next one would be 5 pi over 2. So let's just write out a couple. 
uh, 1 pi over 2 x equals 3 pi over 2 x equals 5 pi over 2 dot dot dot. We basically have vertical asymptotes at x equals n pi over 2 where n is an odd integer this time. All right, now I'm going to leave the graph of cotangent as an exercise. All it will take is doing the same inversion of values we did for sine and cosine. Um, and let's just talk about the easiest way to graph a transformation of one of these reciprocal functions, in particular the reciprocal functions uh, that are uh, cosecant x and secant x. Um, the best way to do these is to actually graph the transformation of the corresponding basic trig function and then fit in the reciprocal function so that it touches the maximums and minimums. If we go back to the graph of Desmos, you can see that um, secant x touches the graph of cosine x and has asymptotes where cosine x intersects its midline. And the same thing for sine x. The graph of cosecant x intersects the graph of sine and has asymptotes where sine intersects its midline. So when we go to graph a shift of cosecant and secant, the easiest thing to do is graph the shift of the corresponding sine or cosine and then sketch in the cosecant or secant. And then you can double check with Desmos to make sure you've got it right. So for example, to graph y equals 2 secant x plus 1, we actually start by graphing y equals 2 cosine of x plus 1, because secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. So what I have shown here is the graph of 2 cosine x plus 1, which is the graph of cosine stretched vertically by 2 and then shifted up by 1. Now this cosine has a midline at y equals 1, so I'm going to go ahead and pencil that in with a ruler at y equals 1. There's the midline. And where cosine crosses uh, this midline should be where our vertical asymptotes show up for secant. So I'm going to sketch in my vertical asymptotes where cosine crosses the midline at 3 pi over 2 and where cosine crosses the midline at pi over 2 and where cosine crosses the midline at negative pi over 2. And now I have a structure to place my secant graph on. Secant has to touch the top of cosine with a concave down curve, and secant has to touch the bottom of cosine with a concave up curve between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Again, touching the top of the cosine curve between 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2, and it would just continue to repeat. So if we wanted to write down now five properties of this graph we now have, which is y equals 2 secant x plus 1. Uh, I actually make my asymptotes in orange here just to make it a little clearer wherever the asymptotes are. I'll tell you a little trick when you do this. It sometimes helps to take an old-fashioned pencil and sketch in the sine or cosine curve and then draw the secant or cosecant curve in pen and then just go through and erase your pencil so it's very light on your graph and you can clearly see the graph of the reciprocal function. Okay, let's just go ahead and write five properties of this now. Um, we can start with kind of the standard period asymptotes midline, right? So the period haven't altered the period. The period is still pi. The midline did move. The midline, instead of being at y equals 0, it's now at y equals 1 because we shifted it up 1. The vertical asymptotes, those are at negative 1 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So those are at odd multiples of pi over 2. So x equals n pi over 2, where n is n odd integer. All right, what else can we say here? We have a domain that is all real numbers except where we have the vertical asymptotes. So except x equals n pi over 2 where n is an odd integer. Now let's talk about the range. It might not be what you expect. 
When I look at the range starting at the lowest possible value, um, I would have y values that are negative infinity coming all the way up to a y value of negative one and then jumping all the way up to y value of three going to infinity. So when I think about that in terms of how I write it in an interval, I'm going from negative infinity to negative one, jumping up between three and positive infinity. That's left parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative one, right bracket, union, left bracket, three, comma, infinity, right parentheses. So it's basically all real numbers except between negative one and three. But those endpoints are okay in the range because we do come all the way down to those values and all the way up to those values in our reciprocal function graphs.